Hello again from Don Flint on Corpus Christi, Texas, Padre Island. Just a review of why this series is happening. Uh, my Army and military career was about two years because I was drafted. And so I communicated with the homeland through letters. And my folks were kind enough to gather up all the letters that I sent from everybody I sent them to that they could think of and had those people send their letters in to my mom and dad so they could collect them and give them to me at a later date, which they did. They probably waited 15, 20 years before they gave them to me, probably thinking that I would appreciate them more. And so I discovered these letters recently, and here we are right in the middle of this coronavirus shutdown, and you know, things are starting to loosen up now, but I needed something to do. So I got into this, started reading these letters, and said, man, that might make an interesting uh, YouTube uh, series. And I, I'm deeming to keep them short so people can watch them, not be overburdened with time. So 15, 20 minutes is what I'm trying to shoot for. And as I go through this, I notice the letters are getting better and more interesting. And so I'm gonna start reading some more letters right now. This is uh, a fun little project. I'm enjoying it, and I hope y'all are enjoying listening, uh, reading them too, or hearing me read them. You know, I try to comment on things too that, that I think are important. So this was, uh, now I, I'm in uh, Cameron Bay in Vietnam. Cameron is a base, a uh, logistical base mainly, and they had an Air Force base there. There's a uh, Vietnamese Navy training center. There's uh, a hospital that our engineers built. And there basically was nothing on this, uh, this peninsula when they arrived. And they're building the infrastructure, the roads, the bar uh, billets or barracks. A uh, hospital was built. Uh, runways for the Air Force, and they used them for uh, F-4 Phantoms to run sorties out of there. So the Air Force was there and strong. <clears throat> it's a big shipping harbor, a deep harbor, natural. They built, uh, in the process during this time I was here, building piers for the, the uh, ships to be able to dock and unload their, their equipment and materials. There was a tremendous material shortage in Vietnam, so they couldn't get all the things they needed easily to build stuff, and everything had to be built from scratch. There was no lumber because the Viet Cong had, it was in charge or owned all, didn't own. They took over all the forestry reserves, which were actually nearby Cameron Bay, but we couldn't get to them because of the danger. So anyway, that's where I'm starting. I'm at the uh, headquarters company, which I was very appreciative of being there. And uh, it was, you know, it's still a rough life. It's not, not perfect, but this kind of tells you some of the things that, that went on there. This letter is dated uh, May 24th, 1966. It's to mom and dad in Corpus Christi. Things are still the same here. My job is still keeping the Jeep up and do what little office work we have. Tomorrow I have KP and even that isn't hard here. On Thursday I have to lubricate the Jeep and change the oil. That is a real messy job and is one which I dislike greatly. There was so much sand all around everything. The thing was built on sand. that They found out that sand was 20 feet deep. That's why it was so hard to build on. The sand was useless for anything and uh, just a mess. And it got into everything. It stuck to everything. It was a real hard job. And the equipment took a beating uh, driving around this stuff. Everything had to be in four-wheel drive. Yeah, it was really rough for, on the equipment. I did something which I really enjoyed yesterday. There's a ship called the Salisbury, which is a Navy seaplane tender that is anchored out in the middle of the bay. A friend of mine, PFC Curry of Special Services, takes a film out and exchanges it for another each day so we can have more variety in our movies. At the ship, so yesterday, I went along with him to help bring some things he was going to buy for Lieutenant Lyons back to headquarters. 
We went down to the dock and caught a launch from the ship, which travels to and from the ship about every hour. On the way out to the ship, I thought how Johnny would ride a similar launch going from his ship, Johnny Cotton, by the way, who was in the Navy at the time, would ride a similar launch going from his ship to shore while I was going to his ship from shore. He would get pleasure from going to land while I get pleasure from visiting his ship at sea. We got to the ship and boarded and went below. Life at sea must certainly be different from life on the land. I don't know if I would like it or not. I think I would like moving around to different places like they do, but I wouldn't like being there in for four years. They have a snack bar in Nice PX, or ship store, as the Navy calls it. Curry bought the stuff he wanted, and we left by launch once again for shore. It was a real interesting afternoon, actually only two hours. And I'm looking forward to going again. I kind of remember that, and uh, what was neat about it was the ship store, they had stuff like ice cream cones and film. I could buy my film that I needed and candy. It was just kind of a lot different from what we had available to us. I vaguely remember it. Uh, don't remember it fully, but I do remember it. It has been raining here for the last few days, and this is unusual for this time of the year. I like it because it keeps it cool. The temperature is staying in the 80s lately. The rain sure tears up the roads, though, and our Jeep gets covered with mud, which means I have to wash it. I hope it doesn't get too hot this summer. It is supposed to reach 130 in August. There is a village called Cameron Village here, but it is off limits to American personnel right now. I expect it to be open soon, and I plan to visit it at that time. The Vietnamese who live in the village work for the U.S. as laborers and are usually all around. Everywhere you go, you see these people working and resting, mostly resting. There is a Vietnamese Navy basic training school down the street from here, and you see a lot of RVN sailors running around the place. All the maids and KPs are here at headquarters, or nationals. One of the nicest men I've met is the Navy advisor to the RVN Army. His name is Lieutenant Bodenaire, and he has been in the Navy Pacific Fleet all the time he has been in the Navy. Our food situation is not too good. It always is well prepared and tastes reasonably good, but they always have the same thing. In the morning, we have eggs cooked to order and bacon, bread, and grapefruit. For lunch, we either have roast beef or ham. And for dinner, we have the opposite of what we had for lunch. Although the meals themselves are good, we certainly get tired of them. I hope that something will be done to alleviate this problem. My washing is done by a Vietnamese girl named Nun, but I can't vouch for how good it is. They usually don't smell too good, but they look pretty good. I think it was the water that they used, and they didn't have a lot of soap, so I think they were washing our clothes in a stream and is pounding them on rocks, kind of like you see on National Geographic. And uh, they didn't smell that good, but they looked good. So they usually didn't smell too good, but they looked pretty good. It doesn't cost too much to have them done either, for it costs me only about 140p a week, which is apparently Vietnamese money, which is about $1.20. If you send any more goodies, please include some kind of nuts. Good nuts are hard to find over here. I'm still eating your, the candy you sent, and it's real good, and it hasn't melted yet. That's all the news from here, so I will say so long for now. Love, Donnie. On the 31st of May, to Mom and Dad, my mail has been coming regularly, but how would I know if I'm not getting anything if I don't get it and don't know it is coming? I did get about 10 letters that were supposed to go to me at the other address, and I guess that was all I had. There was only one letter that I know that I haven't gotten yet, and that is the first letter that my friend Russell Kane in Monterey, California, wrote to me. I've been real busy and haven't had much time to write anyone as I did before, but I'm going to write a bunch starting now until I finish. I bought Dad a camera and I will try to get it home before your trip, but there is such a big crowd at the post office that I couldn't get up to a window to send it. Enclosed is the receipt for the camera, 
so that if you have to pay duty, you can show them it was bought in a U.S. Army PX. And I don't think you have to pay duty on it because it was bought in a PX. It is a real nice camera and should give good service. I believe it was a Topcon and single lens reflex. And uh, I think my dad used it for a long time. It is a real nice camera and should give good service. It is covered by warranty and I think it should be repaired by any Bessler Topcon dealer. It is supposed to be of the top professional quality class and I hope it will be okay. I will try to get it mailed so as to reach there before, but don't expect it to arrive on time. I'm sending it to your P.O. box. I believe I paid about $130 for that camera. Today was payday, and I received $184. I will either send it home or spend it. One little voice says to send it home to the bank, while the other little voice says spend it as fast as you can I really don't know what to do, and this is too much money to be carrying around. I have been thinking of getting a tape recorder and buying or getting tapes of music, and also sending voice letters home along with a small recorder for you to, to have. A lot of the guys do that with good results. The worst thing is that the PX doesn't carry very much of that kind of stuff. If I don't spend it Right off, I won't spend very much of it because last month I only spent about $20 on junk. I could cut this amount severely if I wanted to. Please check on where I can buy tapes and maybe get me a catalog of tapes and send it to me. Perhaps you know of someone who has a tape recorder and who will make tapes of the radio and or off their own records or my records. Let me know what you think of this idea. It sure looks as if you're going to have a real nice vacation. What car are you planning to take up there? Drive carefully and don't try to push your distances, for that is a good way to get in trouble. Keep me posted as to what you do on your trip. Speaking of trips, I have just about decided to go to Tokyo in September with a fellow in our tent. He wants to go there because it will be right at the start of the monsoon season and wants to miss as much of that as possible. I shall take a lot of pictures in Tokyo, and I'm planning to buy my camera there and a few other things. Yesterday, yesterday, the chaplain and I took a half day off. We went to the beach for a swim and both got sunburned. He got it worse than I did because I have gotten some sun and he hasn't as yet. He is really hurting today. We are going to do that every Monday afternoon to make up for the Sunday we work. I can't wait to come home in about 10 months. I'm getting short. That's all, Donnie. That was interesting. This is the 4th of June, 1966. Dear Jeannie and Johnny, things are still fine here in Vietnam. I've been keeping busy with my work and enjoying every minute of it. Yesterday was a bit sticky because we had the change of command ceremony for our new commander. And there were about five generals around the place. Today, General Westmoreland is supposed to visit here, and I hope I get to see him. The new commanding officer has made a few changes already, one of which was to cancel our Sunday morning service because our com company is too small and there hasn't been a good response. The reason for the small response is the old chaplain before Chaplain Hendrickson, didn't make it interesting enough to attract the men to church. The ones who have heard Chaplain Hendrickson have been coming to all the services. Several of us would like for him to start a small Bible study or a discussion group on a weeknight, but he doesn't seem to want to, and there's no good place to hold it. We will keep trying, though, and we'll let you know what happens. I am still not getting any fellowship to speak of, and it sure shows up in my attitude lately. I can't wait to get back to where I can come in contact with more active people. I have another 10 months to go before I'm back in the States, then about five months after that left in the Army. If I extend here about two months, I could get out about three months early because there would be no use of going to a new post for less than three months. I still have 
about 40 days of leaf coming also. And I plan to take advantage of them one way or another. As far as the water is concerned, there is no sign of one here at Cameron as yet. We hear rumors all the time and nothing ever comes of it. It's funny how the people react to us. I can't tell, I'm talking about the Vietnamese people, I can't tell if they want us here or not. Sometimes they seem to appreciate us and at others they seem to take advantage of us. Prices are rising rapidly because they can get it from the GI and this is hurting their economy. The talk is that the villages and towns will be placed off limits to all GIs and will be isolated from all the Vietnamese except for the laborers. And this is supposed to solve all sorts of problems. The village of Cameron is off limits right now and it's just down the street. And I have never been in it even when it was on limits. One of my friends I met in basic training is here in Vietnam and stationed just a hop, skip and a jump from here at Phang Rang. And we have been riding. I told him I would put him up if he came here and I'm now hoping we can get together. It is lucky that we are so close together. Jerry is from Phoenix and is about 22. I believe his name was Jerry Cochran. Right now I am trying to get a tape recorder somewhere. The PX is out and so is every other source that we have around here. I could wait until September when I go to Japan, but I'd like to have it now. A friend of mine here at Cameron has a beautiful set of speakers and a bunch of good tapes, but he doesn't have a recorder, and since I want one, it should make a good team. He had his bunk next to mine. I will also be able to send voice letters home with it also. I bet you're really glad to have to leave the Navy in September. I know I would be. I hope Johnny hasn't forgotten his architectural training he got in school, and I'm sure you, you haven't. I still want to return to school when I get out of here, and I can hardly believe that I still have about 17 months to go still. It seems like I have been in the Army longer than, than that to have so much left. There's not much new around here, and we've been swimming a lot. The CO placed the beach where I live off limits for swimming on the premise, on the pretense, that it was polluted. But I know it isn't polluted, and that it's just a power struggle between two commanders. In the meantime, we go over to the South China Sea and swim there. It is a lot nicer there anyway. It doesn't take any time to get sunburned over here because the sun is so strong. And I have gotten burned several times. The chaplain got it real bad the other day and was almost sick for about three days. I should have a good tan when I come home next year. We are lucky to be here on the beach rather than the jungle like so many of our boys are. I hope I stay right here for the whole year. Keep me posted on your family's news. That's all from here. Donnie. This is to my sister in Northern Lawton, Colorado. June 6, 1966. Dear Janet and Glenn, that's Glenn, Janet and Glenn Mintgen, M-E-N-T-G-E-N. -E Glad to hear that your new baby is old enough now for you to enjoy mountain trips again. I bet it is really great to get out into the hills and hike again. It is too hot to hike here and also too dangerous because you never know who or what is out in the hills. There is great danger in snakes here and I've only seen one so far. Some of the boys in our company went to Natrang this past weekend and got hit by sniper fire, but didn't know it until today when they noticed that the headlight was all busted out and a slug was laying down inside it. That was a real close call and sort of makes me not want to go up there, ever. That's the first incident that I have heard of since arriving here, though and it isn't much. I bought some beautiful Akai speakers made in Japan today from a friend who needed some money for some bills he had to pay. I paid $70 for them and they are worth about 140 and they really sound great. I will probably send them home as soon as I can to save them from the wear and tear of being on the beach all the time. Right now they are being used on a tape recorder and are sounding real good. It's too easy to spend money around here so I'm having some money sent straight home to my bank starting next month so my account will build itself up so I can buy a car when I get home. 
in answer to your questions, yes, we do get to wear civilian clothes if we want to off duty, but there is no place to go in them. After work, I usually put on some Bermuda shorts that mom sent me and wear those the rest of the evening. Sometimes I go swimming after supper, and then change into civilian clothes. My working hours are from 0700 to 1130 hours, and from 1300 to 1700 hours for 13 days, and the 14th day we have off. This type of schedule makes the month seem shorter because we have two weekends instead of four. Yesterday I had the day off because the chaplain did not hold services because he has a supervisory job over other chaplains and fills in for them when he has to. I went swimming and laid in my bunk and listened to tapes most of the day. The chaplain had my Jeep, so I couldn't go anywhere. I have been taking the Jeep home with me at night, but not going anywhere in it. There's not really too much to talk about this place, so I guess I'll close for now. Keep me informed about your family and write soon. Love, Donnie. This is uh, 14th of June, 1966. Dear Mom and Dad, thank you very much for the two boxes of goodies you sent me. The ones with the pralines arrived and was eaten promptly. They were delicious and not mashed or broken at all. The other package with the two shirts and a can of pecans arrived unharmed also. I could sure use the shirts because I only had one to use before. Those pecans were good also. I don't know if you received the camera before you left on your trip, but if it didn't get there, it will be there when you, get, when you come home. It is insured against loss for $50, so let me know if it doesn't arrive. I've been looking for a tape recorder, and I think I will get a battery-powered kind because the power we have here fluctuates so much that an electrical one doesn't work well and the climate is very bad on that sort of equipment. I may buy a big one in Tokyo and send it home before I leave here. I have already bought the speakers for the tape recorder I want. The unit I want is made by Akai of Japan and is known as Roberts by Ream in the States. I can purchase it for half or a third of the US price. I only paid $70 for the speakers and they are truly beautiful. I may send them home soon, I don't know yet. I'm spending all my money instead of saving it like I should. I hope your trip has been enjoyable and you are feeling good. I bet it is fun to see all the family again. I wish I was able to go also. I am behind in my letter writing lately and I have six letters to write immediately. The magazine you sent arrived today and it was real good. I was real glad. I do have one request though. Please stick to those names of magazines, Motor Trend, Car Life, Sports Car Graphic, Road and Track, and Car and Driver. I would be able to keep up a lot better with any of those. I like the idea of your taping my records and sending them to me, but I don't know how you would choose once to tape. Let me know how you can do it. I have access to a recorder if you do. My old golf girlfriend wrote and said she would send tapes of music from the radio, and I'm going to tell her she can she can if she wants to. I mentioned old girlfriend and don't know who that is. I cannot remember. I can get tape real cheap over here if you need any. Today, today everyone is sick from the water they have been drinking. Most of all, most of the officers are the worst off. I feel okay myself because I have been using a different water supply than they. I got a gamma globulin shot today, about five cc's. It still hurts where I sit down. Charlie Ulrich is in Mexico, and I got two letters from him today. Got a picture of him, by the way. Let me see if you can see that with his surfboard. I got two letters from him today, dated the third and the sixth. He doesn't like it too much, but is having a good time. I think he went down with some friends to surf in Mexico. I vaguely remember that. Of course, I was overseas. I couldn't go. The temperature has been 102 in the tent at noon, but at night, go down to a cool 80 
or degrees or so. Not too bad as yet. Gotta go, son, Donnie. That was me. This is uh, to mom and dad, June 21st, 1966. I hope you had a wonderful trip and got back okay. Now you will have to get things ready for Janet and Glenn and the baby's visit. I am sure having them down to see you will be a lot of fun for both you and the kids. I only wish I was home to enjoy it also. Things are fine here with the weather bright and clear with the temperature around 100 degrees in the daytime and 80 degrees at night. I'm getting used to the temperature and don't notice the heat any, at all anymore. I've been going swimming almost every day and it sure helps to relax me. It is nice to live so close to the ocean and I can see how people like to live on beaches. I've gotten back about four boxes of slides and the ones I have taken around here show quite well what it looks like around here. I plan to go down to Cameron Village pretty soon and I will take some shots of typical Vietnamese life. I still haven't decided whether to send my slides home to you to let them see, let you see them or just keep them and show you them when I come home. What would you like me to do with them? I will be able to develop and print my own pretty soon as a friend of mine is a professional photographer in civilian life and is setting up a dark room, we have already bought an enlarger. We should be set up in another month or so. Our main problem is heat. It ruins film and makes any kind of closed up dark room too hot to stay in for long. We need something to keep the chemicals at a constant temperature while developing. We are looking for an air conditioner to use, but this may be next to impossible. Those things will be worked out soon though. There are some things that I would like to have if possible. You know, these little cans of Fritos and other types of corn chips and things. Well, I'd like to have a few of these cans to munch on. I really do like everything you send me. I would like to know how the business is doing lately and what if any changes you have made since I left. Maybe when I come home, you will have a job for me. But we can talk about that later. I hope you haven't been worrying about me over here. Mrs. Coleman, my ne our next door neighbor in Corpus Christi, wrote me and told me that my letters have kept you from worrying. This is really the best place to be in Vietnam, bar none, and I wouldn't trade it for any other place in Southeast Asia. We don't even have a bad mosquito problem here and don't use nets to sleep under. There is a convalescent hospital here for the boys who were hurt in combat or had disease but not bad enough to evacuate them to the states. This area is also used for R&R &R for these stationed in the jungle so they can get some sun and relax a little. The VC don't want to destroy this place because they expect to get this place someday and it is really growing fast. The chaplain and I have been watching several projects lately such as road building, animal dump construction. And it is interesting because after the war, the Vietnamese did take over Cameron Bay and have consent continued to uh, build it into a big resort and a port. It's pretty interesting. Just after that last sentence, the group doctor came in and told the chaplain that there was an emergency at the refugee camp at Dong Ba Thin and could he had me take him over there since his vehicle was out of service at the time. The chaplain said it was okay and I left group headquarters at about 1045. We got over there about 10 miles from here. The doctor found two small boys deathly ill. He sent me back to an aviation battalion to get a chopper to air evac these two little boys to Nha Trang about 15 minutes by air. The operations clerk wanted me to ride with the chopper to show the pilot where the camp was. So I left my Jeep there and climbed aboard the bird. Luckily, I had my miniature camera that I had brought last week with me and I've been taking pictures as soon as I got to the chopper. We took off and landed across the road from the camp. And the doctor brought the two sick children and put them in the helicopter. I rode with them to Nha Trang and then back to the place where I had left the Jeep. 
You really made for an exciting day, and I really enjoyed my first helicopter ride. I got back to the office at four in the afternoon. This area is very beautiful from the air, and if the pictures turn out, I will show them to you. I only regret that I didn't have my Zeiss and some color film with me. That is all about all the news from here for now. Write me soon. Those pictures I took with my miniature camera did not come out very well, and uh, but I do have them, and I have uh, a couple that I can show you. So I'll try to show you those. So that was the uh, most exciting thing that happened to me since I've been there, and there was many more to come, but that was one of the best, one of the most interesting, especially the helicopter ride. And uh, interestingly enough, until I read that letter, I had completely forgotten about that incident, and even though I have pictures of it, but uh, it's amazing how, the, how your mind works, and sometimes doesn't work. So. Thanks for watching this episode. It's getting a little long, so I'm going to let it stop here. There are plenty more letters, and believe me, it gets even more interesting as we progress forward. So this is uh, Chapter 3, I think Episode 4. Please share and like and subscribe to my channel. Hope you keep watching. I'm trying to get it to spread all throughout the, uh, the uh, Internet so people can enjoy this. Bye-bye for now.